beautiful, sweet love of leaves. Take his holy names, uh, chant, chant with loving taste, and dance in ecstasy. Sing, sing his glories, his holy names, dance in ecstasy. And that's what we find all through his life. And specifically, and from the time he started manifesting his own self in a godly way, beautiful way from Mabaddi Dham, thereafter, thereafter Shamayak, but he was full of Krishna Prema, full of Krishna Prema, that was his life. Okay. That was his life, to be, which was filled with eight divine symptoms. Okay, eight divine symptoms or qualities, signs of ecstatic love of Krishna. Mm. Not only he released it, but he also distributed that nectar in the release. Nectar in release of Krishna Prema, ecstatic love of Krishna, among all his associates, devotees. And even became so broad, okay, so benevolently also among one and all, whoever came in contact with him. That was the reality. The, the people who were Whoever came in contact with Lord Chaitanya at that time had that mystical you know, feelings, taste of ecstatic love of Krishna. Okay. But they were so fortunate. Many of them felt they did not deserve it by the merciful grant. By the merciful grant of Lord Chaitanya, it was possible to rescind. They received a glimpse of that nectarian taste of Krishna Prema. Had the nectarian, ex nectarian experience of ecstatic love of Krishna. Therefore, all, not only his associates, but also all other people who ever came in contact with Lord Gauranga or Lord Charitanya in their life felt immense gratitude towards that golden lord. He is addressed as golden lord in a poetic way because he looked very beautiful, tall, tall, with golden complexion, golden color. And we also poetically say, devotees poetically describe he was the golden lord with the golden gift of Krishna Prema, matchless gift of life, Krishna Prema, Radha Krishna Prema. He, he actually appeared, Krishna himself appeared to be Gauranga, embracing the mood and complexion of Simati Radha Rani. Therefore, Krishna became imbued with the complexion, golden complexion of Simati Radhika and became Gauranga. Gauranga means the Lord with golden complexion. So back to the point, Simati Vishnu Priya Devi. Vishnu Priya Devi was the epitome of the example of love and sacrifice, mm. divine love and sacrifice, both in her life. Mm. So back to the point, what I was saying, even from before the marriage, Gaudahari, mm. prior to his sannyasa life, he and Vishnu Priyadevi already uh, 
already uh, knew they already already discovered their relation relationship in eternity in other words they they discover their eternal divine relations between them so is made for each other and at some point they they were married fulfilling the desires of their parents mahaprabhu during his household life mahaprabhu set many noble examples of the householder duties such as taking care of the guests coming in the residence okay every day taking care of all the family members after worshiping okay worshiping lakshmi narayana radha krishna in a word they set the example of krishna samsar krishna's family life in their own married life all our family lives will be converted into krishna's family life okay, then it is then it becomes very fruitful blessed when we when we do when we take care of our family life in a just a mundane way more selfish selfishly oriented way mm, such as with, with the principles an attachment of i me mine it is my family okay i am everything all in all here then it becomes more at a mundane nature but while we put supreme lord in the center center of the as the center of the interest of the whole family life offer when we offer the whole of family in his service and live as his loving servitor in that family life then that is called ideal that is called ideal family the family life lived in god consciousness krishna consciousness instead of mundane consciousness that brings everyone towards the divine liberation at some point it because that connects to the supreme supreme god supreme life divine at some point and another uh, it becomes so blessed living that kind of family life becomes so benedictin divinely benedictin that the supreme lord and supreme lord appears in that family life okay because that family the consciousness of that family becomes mm, fulfilled with the uh, love of god loving service to the god so that is the distinction in consciousness Vishnu Priya Devi actually lived that kind of family life okay in Krishna consciousness Radha Krishna consciousness also Gauranga consciousness it was so painful for her when she saw her husband took sanyasa formally left her behind but she helped she she was very uh, 
accommodating about that because she knew her husband Gaudahari needed to they need, needed to accept the sannyasa because in those days the sannyasa order used to be highly respected also now highly respected and in order to preach propagate the messages of divine Krishna consciousness uh, messages of the life of service to Krishna highest fulfillment of life <coughs> it was more convenient it was more suitable okay appropriate to accept the sannyasa order then being in the sannyasa order engaged in preaching and propagating okay the divine messages of Lord Krishna then it was easily accepted well accepted in the society Therefore, Lord Gaudahari at some point decided to accept some national order so that whatever he was going to speak, so that his life and precepts, his divine messages become well accepted, respectfully accepted by one and all in the society. And that's what happened. So, after Kaurahari took Samnyasa order and became Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Vishnu Priyadevi continued her, her life in a very so much renunciation, a renounced manner with so much holy austerities. She used to be absorbed in now bhajan used to be absorbed in taking holy names of Krishna, Radha Krishna, in almost all days and night she would be absorbed in, okay, in loving service to Krishna. Also, Srimad Mahaprabhu most I mean wholeheartedly all through all through her endeavors and hmm, and thus she became a great example of the pure devotee of Radha Krishna during her lifetime a lady pure devotee. The devotees of Lord Gauranga, devotees of Krishna Radhika, were so, they were so, they had so much awe and reverence for Vishnu Priya Devi. They had all loving regards, their devotion to Vishnu Priya Devi knowing she was not different from Lord Gauranga. Intimate related to Lord Gauranga. Vishnu Priyadevi was also intimately related. Intimately related to Lord Gauranga even after his sannyasa. But a spiritual way, divine way, so happened, Lord Gaudahari would be appearing before Vishnu Priya Devi when she would be crying, praying to Lord Gauranga to give darshana, to manifest before her. Lord Gauranga would be manifesting, would be appearing before Vishnu Priya Devi right then when she would be very much in pain of separation from Lord Gauranga. Formerly it was that at the time Gauranga, see Lord Gauranga was in Jagannath Puri, Nilachara far, far away from Navadvipa. 
And Vishnu Priya Devi was situated in Navadipa. But Lord Gauranga would be made, would be made. Lord Gaurahari would be just simply appear in a mystical, divinely mystical way before Vishnu Priya Devi. And Vishnu Priya Devi used to be absorbed in the dhyanam, Gaura dhyanam, the devotional meditation of Lord Gauranga. At some point she would be she would be feeling, she, she could sense, she would feel Gaurahari, her beloved Gaurahari actually came to see her. She would open the eyes and would be seen Lord Gauranga, this beautiful Shamnashi, just standing before her. She would have like waking vision, mystical divine vision of Lord Gauranga in this way, time to time. Thus, Vishnu Priya Devi and Lord Gaurahari always a continued reciprocation between them all along. Their nature of relationship cannot be just understood, cannot be just simply understood in ordinary mundane way. And well, it will be misunderstanding, has to be understood okay. in the divine ways, divine ways, mystical divine ways, because that's how it was, it is. After the birth of Sri Vishnu Priya Devis, she was given the name Vishnu Priya, means so beloved to Lord Vishnu or Krishna. Since Vishnu and Krishna are same tattva, so Vishnu Priya was given that, specifically given that name because she would be, she, she used to be so adherent. In other words, she would have so much loving devotion to engage in worshipping Lakshmi Narayana Krishna. In other words, from her very childhood, she had, she had great devotional attraction, loving attraction, to engage in worshipping Lakshmi Narayana Krishna. So, our parents already felt that, felt that spirit in her, the devotional spirit in her from the very beginning and named her as Vishnu Priya, beloved to Lord Vishnu, Lord Krishna. And so that quality, same quality was manifested all through her life and practices. She was, she was a very, very exalted. Uh, even if, even though she was incarnation of Lakshmi Devi or Vaikuntha, at the same time she also set the great example that of life of pure devotion, ecstatic loving service to. Krishna and Gauranga all through her life activities. This is, this was, this is Srimati Vishnu Priya Devi. This, the true, a part of his true life study was that every day she would be engaging after Mahaprabhu left left the family. Okay, after Mahaprabhu, as Mahaprabhu left the family, family life and took Shannasho life, went to Nilachalapuri and then 
from that time onward Vishnu Priyadevi used to be absorbed in chanting holy names of Krishna Hare Krishna Mahamantra other holy names of Krishna every day so it was it has been described that Vishnu Priyadevi would be absorbed. when engaged in chanting lakhs of holy Nam, Hare Krishna Mahamantra every day after finishing So, after, uh, some say after finishing one round of chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra, some say after chanting each one Hare Krishna Mahamantra, so you'll be keeping one grain, you'll be saving one grain of rice. So, the two opinions, some say um, after as chanting one Mahamantra, keeping one grain. Some say after completing one full round 108 times Hare Krishna Mahamantra, so you'll be keeping one grain of rice. In this way, after chanting lakhs Mahamantra, whatever rice grains would be accumulated, so you'll be just taking those and mix with some shabjis and cook. Offer to the Krishna, Krishna deity, Narayana, Lakshmi Narayana, and you'll be eating that. Only she left, she lived her life, the great holy austerity. After Lord Gauranga left, she was in pain of separation. And Lord Gauranga, as if she did not want to continue with her life due to acute pain of separation from her beloved husband, Lord Gauranga. Yet she knew that her, Lord, her beloved Gaurahari wanted, would be wanting her, actually wanted her to continue her life with service to Lord. Okay. Although she did not, at some point, she didn't want to live her life due to extreme pain of separations. Yet, knowing, upon knowing the desire of Gauranga, Lord Gauranga, in order to fulfill the desire of Lord Gaurahari, she continued with her life setting the example of exclusive exclusive life setting the example of de de uh, loving dedication a life of exclusive loving service to Krishna as Gaurahari was engaged to set up that example Okay, Lord Gauranga was the personification of that example of living, uh, living his life for Krishna, for Krishna's service. Similarly, Vishnu Priya Devi also, hmm, he, she also became the example, okay, or the embodiment of living a life of ecstatic love service to Krishna because that is the that's the fulfillment of life okay so this was Vishnu Priya Devi so at some point some of you went to Navadvi Dham May have might have seen a beautiful deity of Mahapuru Gauranga Mahapuru served by Simati Vishnu Priya Devi that is called as Dhameshwara Gauranga situated in Navadiva Dham a beautiful deity of Lord Gauranga 
installed by Srimati Vishnu Priya Devi during the uh, at some point during the lifetime of Lord Gauranga. Lord Gauranga was still present on this in this world. Still Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was present in this world for uh, during his lifetime that beautiful deity of Gaurahari was installed, manifested and installed. That that deity, original deity resembled close to Lord Gauranga. In other words, it was very similar. It's similarly looking that of very similar looks, almost same looks with Lord Gauranga. So it is described in that way. Mm. So that beautiful deity is still there in the Navadvip Dham. Of course, you have to understand this way, that the deity had this very similar looks with Lord Gauranga. So much so, Vishnu Priyadevi felt Lord Gauranga actually appeared in the form of deities before. Uh, she, she continued worshipping that deity with so much love, so much devotion and love, all through. Vishnu Priyadevi was also very much loved by Mother Shachi, the mother of Lord Gauranga. Shachi Mata, Shachi Mata had the very hard time to take care of Vishnu Priyadevi when she was in acute pain of separation from Gauravari. Yet, she did it nicely. As a mother of Lord Gauranga, she was also in acute pain of separation from her son beloved son Gauravari and in Bhatshalda Rasha mood Vishnu Priyadevi's mood was different, distinct from that. But both are in acute pain of separation according to the stance of their relations with Lord Gauravari. Mm. So they, they all at some so from that time onward, they related, they felt their relationship with Lord Gauranga through more Viprolambha mood, mood of union in separation. Mm -hmm. Has to be understood, spiritual sense, no mundane sense. Their feelings of separation was not mundane, that of divine character. Tundari Vidhani Prabhu, another pure devotee of Lord Gauranga. He was Vrishabhanu Maharaj, the father of Simati Radharani in Krishna Lila. Mm -hmm. Mahaprabhu used to call him, My father, why is my father? Imbued with the Bhava, mood of Simati Radhika, Radha Thakurani. Mahaprabhu used to call um, Pundarik Vidyanidhi as father. Where is my divine father? Um, epitome example of the devotee of Raga Margo. Um, so, our time is limited. Almost going to be six o'clock. Anyone has any query, related or unrelated? Because today Vishnu Priyadevi's appearance day, so I took the chance to speak some glory about her. Hare Krishna. In the other Sundays, you all hear about the discussion of so, so many other topics, spiritual topics. So today we dedicate to their glorifications. Have any specific queries? Because 
I'd like to invite yes. Oh, yes. He is Pandavik Vidyanti. Yes. 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 Nearby. But uh, he was settled. He was settled in the Bengal. Bengal area. So, later on he became the spiritual master of Gadadhara Pandit. One of the Panchatapta. There is another full story. Now there is no time to describe the full story how Mukunda Prabhu took Gadadharu to see a great Vaishnava and he took him to have darshan of Pandarik Vidyanti. And the, the way Gadadharu Pandit saw him in the first sight was a bit shocking to him. Pundarik Vidyanid, he was just laying down on a bed, very high class bed, very, very comfortable, taking some gargara <laughs> for wearing so many ornaments. And all over, there's so much luxury, luxurious enjoyment, the sign of luxurious enjoyment all through. And then Gadadhara Pandit looked at Mukunda and thinking, whom he brought me to. Okay. He <coughs> looking at him, he just told him, told Mukunda silently that he was supposed to bring me <coughs> to see a Vaishnava, a great Vaishnava, whom you have brought me to. And his full looks like full sense and jaya full of sense enjoyment, how could he be, can he be Krishna devotee, okay, don't, I don't see any sign of, any sign of dedication, his dedication to Krishna, but he is so much dedicated to, okay, to enjoy, for his own sense enjoyment, and no signs of Renunciation, renounce devotion. So, how can he be a pure Vaishnava, great devotee? Then Mukunda, as Mukunda understood, smiled at Kadadhara Pandit and then chanted one verse from Simad Bhagavatam. Aho Bhakti Jang Sanakal Kutam Jidham Shaya Paya Adatva Shadri. Levi Gotin with heart to Chitang. Levi Gotin with heart to Chitang, Tatulam, Kangva, Dayalim, Sharanam, Brajima. As he chanted that verse from Simad Bhagavatam, immediately there was, immediately there was such a big change in the appearance of Sri Pundari Pitaniti Prabhu. Immediately, his body changed. Mm. His whole form, his whole form, I mean, immediately Gadadhar Pandit could see that Pandit, that same person started being changed. Okay, all of a sudden, mm. he immediately started manifesting the eight kinds of divine love symptoms. Symptoms of love of Krishna and started crying, threw away a comfortable, you know, pillows and all. Mm. And threw away all his uh, some, enjoying paraphernalias around him. Mm. Came down from the bed. Rolling on the started rolling on the ground. Okay, lost external consciousness, external physical consciousness, totally overwhelmed with the ecstatic love of Krishna. 
due to due to the uh, okay due to that fact that Mukunda chanted that verse which is that verse which was glorifying Lord Krishna's mercy to the extreme that Lord Krishna was so merciful he even gave he even granted Putana the liberation someone who wanted to who came to kill him kill baby Krishna was granted a position of liberation okay that way so who can be more merciful Lord than Krishna who can be so merciful merciful Lord other than Krishna that is is a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam glorifying thus glorifying uh, Lord Krishna's mercy so as soon as Pundari Pitandipu heard heard that verse he became filled with Krishna Prema so much so he lost his external consciousness almost threw away all the paraphernalias of his enjoyment okay and some ornaments he was wearing all like thrown away hmm. and he was, came down of the bed and started rolling on the ground crying ha krishna in this way and then Gadadra pandit was wonderstruck he was astounded to see such a great devotee and I misunderstood him upon seeing the external seeing the external sight upon seeing him how he appeared externally I was judging him oh, I committed a great offense to such Vaishnava hmm? such Rashika Vaishnava a great mm, devoted lover of Krishna. I could not understand his heart. Mm, all these are all external things. Actually, he was engaged in making Krishna relish all the enjoyment, okay, in a mystical way, in the form of his own sense enjoyment. He was actually making. Lord Krishna, the master, the lord of all the senses, enjoy everything. He was offering hmm, such a loving enjoyment to Krishna through his own enjoyment in a mystical way which cannot be understood or explained in normal mundane way. Your devotees can do that. Whatever enjoyment they take, in their life, the, the same enjoyment is actually meant for offering to Krishna, to offer the same enjoyment, same relish to Krishna. It happens in a very mystical way, a mystical, you know, transcendental way. Like, for example, our time is limited. Vrindavana Lila, when some of the beloved associates, beloved friends of Krishna used to feed some tasty fruit like in the, during their picnic, during their hmm, play in the land of Braja and picnics kind, Vanabhoja, forest picnic. They were sitting together and some of the beloved friends wanted to feed Krishna some tasty fruit. But before putting it in the mouth of Krishna, some of them would, would be eating themselves. First would first taste, taste themselves and then whichever they found very tasty, they would put in the mouth of Krishna, the mode of friendship. But they were enjoying first. But they were enjoying to give enjoyment to Krishna. And 
times we heard from Gurusala Guru Maharaj, there was a devotee engaged in worshipping, worshipping Krishna and Raghu Marko. So after preparing bed for the Lord, preparing a nice bed, then he would be, he should be sitting and laying down on the bed to feel the comfort, whether it is fully comfortable or not. After being satisfied that the bed was prepared in a very comfortable, nice way, then he would offer to Lord. So first he would do, he would feel that. In a similar way, then what to that similar way? Pundari Bhittanidhi also would be taking all sense enjoyment in all that. After all, to make the Supreme Lord Krishna was already dwelling in his heart, enjoy. Okay, enjoy. To offer all those enjoyment to the Lord. With Lord Krishna already living in his heart. So he was being via media because Lord Krishna is the life and soul, soul beloved. So whatever they accept, whatever they do for Lord's pleasure, for Lord's pleasure, living in their heart, their they are living that life, carrying Supreme Lord in their heart and soul. <clears throat> their whole life is meant mm, exclusively meant for love service to the Lord, dedicated. So when a dedicated devotee, a pure devotee of the Lord does anything, even takes enjoyment, ultimately meant to be offered to the Krishna. That was the truth. That was the reality in the life of Pundari Bhittaniti Prabhu. So Gadadhara Pandit could realize that. And then at some point he made he made most respectful obeisance. Full of reverence and if you wanted to take initiation from him, accepted Pundarik Bhittanithi as his guru. He also accepted him as disciple. After all, Pundarik Bhittanithi was none other than Gadadhara Pandit, father in Brajavila, as Gadadhara Pandit was Simati Radhika, incarnation of Simati Radha and in Gauravila. They had eternal divine relationship already between them. So it manifested like Leela, like the Leela. Question may arise, Gadadhar Pandit could not, Gadadhar Pandit was the extended self of Lord Gauranga. Okay. Beloved associate, like second self of Lord Gauranga, made the mistake, could not recognize the pure devotee. Pundarik Bhittanidhi as pure devotee, how could it be? How could he make mistake? How could he be misled? Hmm? Like that he could not, he could not have the in-depth vision to understand who was he. So, he was mistaken. So the answer is, all the part of Leela. Hmm. Otherwise, Leela will not happen. So it was not a real mistake on the part of Gadadhar Pandit, but it was so designed by Yogamaya Devi, so arranged by Yogamaya Shukti of the Lord Gauranga. It had to happen that way. It had to manifest, the Leela had to manifest that way between Gadadhar Pandit and Pundarik Bhittanithi to be also met Pundarik Bhittanithi by pure history. So Hare Krishna. I offer my I offer my devoted obeisance, loving devotional obeisance to the lotus feet of Simati Vishnu Priyadidi Pundari Bhittanidi Prabhu Raghunath Das Goswami. All Lord Gauranga on this holy day. 
this was the occasion. Today also, today is also the occasion of Saraswati Puja in India. The day of day of engaging in worshiping of Devi Saraswati. <laughs> Devi Saraswati, the goddess of all knowledge, divine goddess of all knowledge, divine wisdom, and also goddess of the music, incarnation, being the incarnation of Srimati Radharani, she also, she is also understood, worshipped as the goddess of music, songs. Actually, it is Srimati Radharani who is the original goddess of the world of devotional songs, world of melodious musics, song of love for Krishna. But uh, Devi Saraswati is considered as incarnation of Devi Simati Radhika, mm. Goddess Radhika. Being empowered by Simati Radha Rani, she also she became the goddess of goddess of divine music and wisdom. Today also, a most auspicious day of of her worship. Saraswati Puja. People, okay, people in India, they engage in worshiping Devi Saraswati Puja today. Vasanta Panchami. By Tithi, today is known as Vasanta Panchami. Okay, Hare Krishna. Go Hare Jai Bhakti Nanda Shyam Maharaj. Jai.